Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. G'day, I'm Fletch, and this is Classic Restos. Australia and the Holden. They grew up together. And on today's show, we have two interesting characters, both owners of classic Holdens. And the first victim on today's show is a guy by the name of Brenton. Now, not only does Brenton own a modified HR Holden, he also owns a vintage Pontiac as well. Not long ago, I took a sticky beak around Brenton's property. And here's a little bit of his story. So here I am, right, driving through the countryside, minding my own business, and I look up on a hill, and here's a, a shed, like a, a farmhouse, and I thought I saw a couple of cars out the front of it. Well, I just had to drive up the driveway and go and have a look, and here's the bloke I found. Here I am in my shed here in rural Victoria, working way today, and who, who would have known? Up comes my driveway's bloody fledge. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> it. These things just don't happen to me. What have we got here? We've got a a lovely HR Holden, which we've spent a lot of time on and we've had a fair bit of fun with. Original Premier. It's uh, got a, a 253 V8 in it. Uh, pretty much most of what's in the car has been taken out of a VR, a 93 VR Holden. So if you can imagine the drivetrain of a VR Holden, that's what there is. You've got a four speed uh, automatic, the same differential, and it's all been transplanted. So certainly that's been uh, how we got it all together. Uh, look, a bit of credit goes to a mate of mine, Jim. Jim, you know who you are. It, it wouldn't have come together without you, so thanks, mate. But uh, it's, it's really something that it's a classic drive car, and uh, it's, it's certainly not a uh, go-fast car with the 253, but it's certainly a nice uh, classic that we've had a bit of fun doing. So with the, uh, the wheels, we ended up with some uh, world wheels. Uh, we've had to change a lot of the spacing on it, uh, just based on the fact that it was difficult with the VR, trying to get it all into place. But uh, we ended up with the right size wheels and uh, we went a little bit smaller on the front than I would have liked, so you'll see that. But, uh, uh, but the steering on a HR Holden is not known for being so good, so it's, it's pretty good how it is. But apart from that, it's been a fun restoration and uh, it's certainly come up well. And we're, uh, we're reasonably happy with it. The red interior on this uh, was a, a big choice. There was a lot of different colours we could have went for, but just the red just seemed to pop. And I'm not someone that likes red normally, but it just pops and it was something that we felt, you know what, let's take a chance and let's go with red. But uh, I, I now love it, so it's come well. Okay, so with Fletch coming down the driveway, I certainly wasn't gonna let him get away. We had hidden away a 1926 Pontiac, which I had to have him see, and uh, it was definitely worth pulling out. This car is something that's really dear to our hearts. It comes from some family friends in Mildura and it's just a classic. Once again, I can't take too much credit on this one. A lot of work done by a friend of mine's father and they used it as a wedding car for a long time, but we've really loved it. Uh, it's a classic. There's no modifications. There's nothing done to it apart from the fact that, you know, it's been restored to exactly what it was in 1926. So yeah, we've, we've really enjoyed this one. We've got these um, beautiful old plates on it and of course you've got a choice um, with in different states where you can go to historic or not historic. We've decided not to because we just want to keep these plates. We don't want to lose them. They're beautiful old. It's when they used to virtually weld the numbers onto them and uh, just uh, beautiful old plates. So uh, we're hoping to, to sort of always keep those plates on it for sure. A good point on the history. This car has uh, been, was sold in 1926 to the uh, original owner. Uh, it was Melbourne bought and it was um, Pretty much used till about 1948 and then it sat in a shed and it sat in a shed till the 1980s and from 1981 my friend's father he just took it and absolutely went to town and I, I love this car so much uh, it's just the fact that it stayed and it was away from people's attention for so long and what, what he did to it was just absolutely fantastic so it's still been an incredible day today i mean how many times do you have Fletch roll down your, you know, your, your driveway and say, can I have a look at your cars? That's pretty good. Just want to thank Classic Restos. You guys are fantastic. Thanks very much for taking the time to have a look at our little collection here. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My Coupe 4 is rare and very special. 
A real performance car with all-wheel drive grip. I'm not a car club bloke and I don't work on it myself, but I do have a great mechanic. One day, I might even get that HQ. When it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. And now it's time for Bob on today's show with his outstanding original EH Holden. This old girl behind me here, the old 64 EH. Uh, it's been in my family for a total of 53 years now, which is very dear to the heart. Uh, originally it belonged to my uncle and auntie who purchased it second hand in 1967, would you believe. So uh, it was primarily used as the family car for a number of years. Um, my uh, cousin's three boys, they all used to pile in the old girl and head up to Foster for their annual Christmas holiday from the Northern Beaches in Sydney. And um, after a few years, they um, <clears throat> upgraded then to a, a VC Valiant wagon. So then uh, my auntie primarily took over the ownership of the car because she loved it that much. So it was only generally used for shopping trips and you know local, local trips, etc. cetera. So, um, and she loved it. She would never have parted with it. Unfortunately, she passed away in about 2010. Uh, the car had been sitting for about five or six years just in the garage. So uh, my cousin Chris rang my, my brother Tony, who's actually a mechanic. Uh, they offered us uh, the car. They wanted to, um, us to look after the car. So uh, my brother Tony and his mate uh, Michael went straight up to Sydney and all they had to do was pour some petrol in the carby and put a new battery in it. She fired first time, would you believe? Uh, so they put it on the trailer and brought it home to the Highlands here. And, uh, you know, did some work to it, obviously. It needed some wheel cylinders and, and some suspension bushes, uh, a few things here and there. Uh, but apart from that, got it all back going again and it's been running fine ever since. Having a classic vehicle should mean not having any classic problems. That's what makes it so good. The old girl, it's a 149 manual, and um, I'm actually a panel better by trade, but in the, in the spare parts game, and uh, you can still buy parts for these, but I don't get a, a big call for them because they are very, very reliable, but the odd, uh, odd, odd uh, man comes in and asks for something for the old girls and uh, I can help them straight away because I generally know what, what he needs and uh, uh, what, what, what parts he's after kind of thing so they can relate to that which is, which is fantastic. The 64 can appreciate how many cars they actually sold so there's, there's quite a few left which is, which is good uh, in original condition. Uh, it was only that the HQ took over in the 70s but I think the HQ ran for approximately four years whereas this Ran for 18 months, I think it was. So uh, the production numbers were, were fairly large in those days, but um, a very popular model, as all um, Holden fans will be aware of. Emotionally, uh, very attached to this car with its family history. Uh, as I say, um, it's been in our family now 53 years. Every time I drive it, you just think of the family, you know, my auntie and uncle and my cousins all sitting in this old girl. Just the, the emotional uh, value uh, is incredible, you know, and uh, occasionally my brother and I take it out together, you know, which even uh, pulls at the heartstrings even further, you know, and again, and my son uh, and his son, uh, they love hopping in it and just feeling what it was like in those days, you know, like they just don't have that experience now but uh, we can certainly relive it for them you know so 
Uh, very, very family oriented, oriented car, absolutely. People that own classic cars, not necessarily a Holden, but any brand, they will understand. It's just the pleasure of driving these old cars. The pleasure you get for them is enormous. It's another world, it's fantastic. I really, really enjoy it. In addition, I would just like to thank my cousins, uh, Chris, David and Matthew, for letting us keep this beautiful car in the family. Uh, my brother and I are now the custodians of this classic piece of Australian history. Uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you guys. Now, Bob, you must appreciate I'm very selective as to who appears on Classic Restos. <laughs> That's right, Fletch. Thank you for having me. Any day with a car like this, what a sensational piece of Australiana here in the bush. And that just, I, I guess, further typifies the Australiana aspect. We've got a 1964 E.H. Holden, built back in a time when Australia was a very different place. And to see it here in its entirety, not messed around with, it's just beautiful. Thank you, Fletch. Yeah, appreciate that, mate. Yes. Now, Bob, being a, a, an ex-panel beater, I know it's, uh, it's like riding a bike. You never forget that trade. What have, what have you done to the bodywork? Is that, is that a clear around the back? No, that's just uh, the old uh, shiny patina, mate. Um, we put a little bit of um, a linseed oil on it to, to shine the patina up. I want to keep it original as possible. So it has had a few uh, patches here and there, you know, a few touch-ups here and there, mm. being, you know, 55 years old. Yeah. But I uh, would like to keep it original, so, um, yeah, just... I thought, I thought linseed oil was for cricket bats. Yeah, <laughs> not, not this one. It's actually boiled linseed oil. Mr Google told me that, so uh, yeah. do a little bit of boiled linseed oil here and there just to keep the, the patina polished. Bob, being near the beaches, it's actually, it's escaped. It's a lucky car. There's not a lot of older cars uh, that, that have a long survival rate on the coast. Correct, yeah. Look, it was garaged a lot, so that, that helped it, certainly. Um, and it was only bought out, you know, every second or third day, basically, for little shopping trips to the, to the local mall, etc. you know. So um, it has a lot of miles on it. Like, it has 36,000 miles on it, but it's definitely been around the clock once. <laughs> oh, so it's done one thirty six. 136, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to lie there. <laughs> Bless its heart. And when we look at the interior, the, the, the beautiful red interior uh, with a couple of little nicks in the front seat, and as I alluded to earlier, you haven't got this car, well, no one's got this car and messed around with it. No one's lowered it. No one's, you know, done any modifications to it. And I'm not against people that have done that. If it's done tastefully, sure, they're, they're still an EH. They still look like a beautiful machine. But to see something like this as how it rolled out of its showroom back in 64 or out of the dealership, should I say, well, who knows? It could have been behind the glass we we don't know that, know that. Um, yes, yes. I don't know if it would have come uh, standard with the linseed oil but uh, <laughs> it's not. it's a nice touch of preservation now mate yeah, thank you yeah look it certainly is untouched uh, original motor all matches numbers matching um, the head's never been off the original 149 three on the tree manual uh, it comes with a diff wine it's got a, a noisy tap it it Come, comes with a diff wine. Again, bless its heart. What I love about the, these early reds, uh, the 149, the 179, or the 186, the way they idle with a standard exhaust, you go around the rear of the car, you literally, well, almost you cannot hear anything. They run like a Swiss watch. Yeah, you, it's funny, isn't it, Bob? You, know, you hear stories, you might hear stories, people said that manual cars years ago were hard to drive. And there's been so many of these older Holdens now that I've driven with this three-speed manual gearbox. Yeah, quite easy. They're just an absolute treat, aren't they? Absolutely. I just can't believe the how good the ergonomics are on this car. Like, the seating position, we've got a, a very standard bench seat covered in vinyl. We've got a, a fairly substantial size steering wheel here in front. But yet, everything seems to match and yeah. and adds up to a, a fairly easy driving experience.
again, styling from 1964. It matches the car. It, it, it meets the criteria. You don't mind driving along with a, a higher than normal wheel. Absolutely, yeah. Like uh, no power steering, no air conditioning, you know, like the old strong arm steering as they used to call it, you know. It's, it's a challenge, but uh, it's fun. That's what makes it fun, you know. Well, the nice thing too about these cars, Bob, they weren't a heavy car. They only ran fairly thin rubber up front so nine times out of ten uh, tractability and steering probably wasn't too bad on these cars no, it was that they are very light it's it's very easy to drive um even if it's just in a straight line you just have to you know wander a little bit of course but <laughs> and here's a fun fact by the time hr came around power steering was available as an option can you believe that correct power steering and disc brakes which this has none of that so um, that's what makes it, you know, more in interesting, absolutely. Try doing this to a new car. Talking of um, appreciating the history of Australian motoring, um, the Shannons Club at the moment yep. has the end of an era series presented yes. by Shane Jacobson. He's done an incredible job on that. And, uh, he has an EH himself, I believe. Well, he's... Apparently so, I know he, he does like his Holdens. Mm. And uh, you're watching the show and you haven't seen End of an Era, uh, I strongly suggest you do. It's a, a four-part series and uh, on the Shannons Club. And it just goes through uh, exactly what it says it, and yeah. explains the end of an era. It's Australian manufacturing in the, in the car business. And uh, the last episode is, is just quite emotional. It really is because you see Shane walking past the cars and picking them out Absolutely. and you can almost hear the you know the, the, the lump, lump in his throat, in throat yeah. yeah yeah and this is yeah. what it's about this is this is what it this is what it does yeah, he's a very passionate man also, Shane. Hey, uh, good guy. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what I, he's talking about. I actually filmed his um, his HJ, his Blue Kingswood that yes. uh, the one that was in the movie in the movie with Hoax. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, at the uh, Atuka Holden Museum. Would have been a a few, I have visited a few there. years back. Great museum, absolutely. Yeah. I guess when you film classic restos, you know, and you you get out and drive something like this, it it really does bring it all home. Absolutely. It's the enjoyment, what, isn't it? What the show means, what what it stands for, the passion of our enthusiasts. Yep, it takes you back. And all car enthusiasts should be insured with Shannon's, which this one is. Well. That goes without saying. Yeah. Classic bike, classic car, classic truck. Yep. Make sure it's insured with Shannon. Sure Pick up the phone and give them a call, 134646 for a quote and a chat. And you can check out more at shannons.com.au. You can't go wrong with Shannons. <laughs> Bob, I really appreciate you being on today's episode. It means a lot. Um, thanks for coming along and, and showcasing, of course, yourself and, and this car, mate. Good on you, Pleasure. Bob. Thank you. Pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Does your current insurer understand your passion? At Shannon's, we're motoring enthusiasts, just like you. We understand the passion you have for your special car or bike. But did you know that Shannon's will also ensure your daily drive, the car you drive every day? So if you're a motoring enthusiast, you've got to be with Shannon's. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. The mighty Aussie E.H. Holden was made from August 1963 through until the January of 1965. It was when Australia was a different place. A decent single wage could pay off the Fibro home, put two kids through public school and pay off the family Holden. When it was time for the EH, there was an existing EJ platform, so the improvements rolled on in. The EH's rear guards took on a straighter look and a lower roof were amongst other styling upgrades. Cosmetic changes are important, but as Australian lifestyle started moving at a brisker rate, so did our cars. The EH introduced the red engine, which stayed with us into the VB Commodore in 1978. The red engine superseded the 138 cubic inch grey engine that was a favourite for many from the first 48215 and although it was reliable, it was underpowered and now outdated in 1964 to continue mass production. 
The EH, though, was a terrific seller for Holden. Over 250,000 EH Holdens were sold in just 18 months, putting them second just in behind the sales of the HQ. This showed just how popular they were back in their day. Today, the EH remains as one of the most popular old Holdens for enthusiasts, in my opinion, a favourite based purely on their design. The EH entered the market at the same time as the new Ford Falcon, which was technically the start of putting the cat amongst the pigeons, starting the rivalry between die-hard fans with Holden versus Ford. The EH Holden was sold as Australia's own, pretty well the way that every other early Holden was looked upon as well. A couple of years ago I had the pleasure of attending the 55th anniversary for the EH Holden, put on by the good folk of the EH Holden Car Club of New South Wales. It was at that event that I soon appreciated the spotlight emphasis for the EH S4. And speaking of such an amazing car, there's no guy here today better to tell the story than Harvey. How are you buddy? Good Fletch, thank you very much. Um, 1963 uh, EHS4. Uh, I've owned the car for about six years. Uh, it's been restored for three years. Myself and one other bloke uh, rebuilt the whole thing from ground up. It uh, took 14 months to totally restore, and it's what you see now. Harvey, the S4 is such an unassuming car. We're talking of a car factory produced by Holden, designed for racing, yet so simple in so many ways. The car still left the factory with cross-ply tyres, no more power than standard with the 179, some bigger brakes, a tougher tail shaft, a couple of little things, but what right. they put, or what Norm Beachy put one of these things through was incredible. Yeah, well he could, uh, he put triples on his after a while and you know, raced in a different class, but uh, this particular S4 went to Bathurst, only three went there. Uh, this was the backup car, and they, uh, uh, one of them pranked up at Mount Panorama in uh, the 500, and they used my tail shaft. And uh, this is S4 here is probably the most renowned at the moment, and it's the only one we know of out of 12 left uh, restored. When we look at the car inside, how amazing is it? We have a rubber floor, yeah. three-speed manual. Yeah. Nothing, no improvement on seats. We're, we're still talking stock standard bench seats here. Uh, the painted steel wheels, two-tone paint uh, on the turret matching the wheels. It's a sleeper, such a sleeper of a car, isn't it? Yep. It's um, coming out of the factory totally stock virtually, except for a few little things. The block's a little bit different. Uh, the gearbox on the side, the, the housing's different. They're, it's got quick release brakes on them. Uh, it's got a bigger tail shaft, bigger tank, 12 gallon tanks, except for the nine. Carburetor on it, um, an automatic one. And um, but still, still single barrel Strongberg oh, though, right? All, yes, yeah. totally stock. Everything had to be stock. He wasn't allowed to race it if you didn't. You had to have the, even the jack had to be stock. The thing is too, nothing jumps out on the car with special badging. To see one of these driving along, Unless you know your stuff, you'd never pick one. No, you wouldn't have a clue. You would just say, oh, there goes another EH. But um, people think they come out with uh, four speeds and uh, twin carbies and things like that. They never, but they had to, the 125 were made. They had to sell back in the day uh, through the dealership so many before they could take them to um, the Bathurst to race. A bit about your restoration here. Under the car looks just as nice as on top of the car. You've done a, a superb job here, Harvey. Yeah, yeah we, uh, like I said, uh, myself and a mate, John Taylor, everything was done at my place. Uh, painted at my place, it's in the acrylic, the way it came out of the factory. Uh, and the motor was built at my place. There's no doubt about it, the EH Holden is a superb looking car. They sold over a quarter of a million of them back in the day. The HQ bumped them off in sales because that series ran for three years. But to have an S4, and 13 left in the country, and there's one behind us here. That's, uh, yeah, I'm speechless on that one, Harvey. Yeah, um, I'm pretty lucky, I suppose. A um, uh, bloke rang me and he, he said to me, oh, I'm selling my S4. He knew all about motors and all this, but he couldn't put the car together. But a uh, real nice bloke, yep. but he, he was really pleased when he seen the car. When he yep. did see it finished, he cried. Yep. Yeah. Well, I would have too. Uh, you, you, you can't get a better restoration than this, mate. Congratulations again. Thanks, Thanks Harvey. Thank you, Fletch. You're Pleased welcome. to meet you, mate. You're Thank right. you. No worries. 
Well, there you have it. I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos, featuring Brenton's classic cars, Bob's amazing original EH Holden, and of course, a little bit of spotlight emphasis on the amazing EH S4. As I say at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.